Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week <coughs> we're discussing stoicism. Yes. Yes. So this will be a somber episode. It will be a somber episode. No, it won't. They never are. Uh, so before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Henny Pen Saison L from the Om Gang Brewery in Cooperstown, New York. And if you wanted to get more information about maybe our review of this beer on the uh, fuck date lawnmower scale and things like that, or if you wanted to learn about <coughs> uh, what's going on in the news as far as philosophy goes, and more about our show and, and cool promos that are coming up... <coughs> What could you do? You could subscribe to our newsletter by going to sixpackphilosophy.com and filling out the little pop-up that's going to come and ask you to subscribe. It's a good idea. That's why I put it there. Or yes. you could just walk down the street and randomly ask people if they know the answer. It might take longer. <laughs> that's how they Maybe. used to do it in your day. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's what it was. I want you to know you have now made my life hard, so thank you. What? You're sitting there mouthing the words to our <laughs> intro. Yeah. So when I do the audio uh, uh, dub in, I now have to line it up with your, with your <laughs> mouthing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you didn't notice I, I did it know, last time, too. What I was thinking here is, it is, is next time we should bring the camera in on one of us and we should just mouth over with Anna's voice coming That would out. be awesome. You know, that, that, that would be interesting. So we are doing stoicism, yes. uh, which is, you know, we're back into an area that, that I'm a little more comfortable in. This beer is exploding on me. Yeah, it it uh, came a little early there, didn't it? So anyway, um, well, it is my beer, and we come early. So Stoicism is interesting because, unlike some of the philosophies that we've explored, although we have covered some that have a um, a cultural understanding in today's society, there are a lot that we've covered that don't. Um, so what is it that you guys think of whenever someone is referred to as stoic? Statue. Uh, I, I think of somebody that is very, um, um, I, I don't, nothing bothers them, nonplussed. Yeah, kind of cold and emotionless. Yeah, yeah. The robotic. ideal judge. Yeah, which is not yeah. exactly what it is. But no, it's, it's uh, not. Uh, it's one of those words that, that that's changed meaning over time. Yeah. Um, so quick thing, fun story. Um, the word stoicism, or, or the name for this particularly particular philosophy, comes from where it is that this that uh, this philosophy was taught. Yeah. In Stoicia, it, <laughs> in the uh, Stoa Policule. Same thing, it, which was a covered walkway. It was a covered walkway outside of the academy. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. We just used to call it the old Sto. Okay. The, the, the stowaway. The, the, the yeah. stow that's away. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For fuck's sake. For fuck's sake. Um, yes. But anyway, so um, in relation to the philosophy itself, stoicism actually refers more to um, not a, a lack of feeling, but a control over your feelings yeah, yeah. and your actions. Which goes back to John's idea of the, the perfect judge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like somebody that, 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 that has the feelings, has the emotions, but is, is able to control them. Yes. Yeah. Not, um, not me, in other words. Exactly. Yeah, not me either, if I'm honest. Um, I try sometimes. I think we all try. No, I don't try. Okay, so I think most of us try. <laughs> um, so, a little bit of history. So, Stoicism came about um, by Zeno of either Citian Siti or Cyprus. I've always heard it Cyprus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you'll you'll likely see that if you're looking into Stoicism, um, represented where he was from. And sometimes you see this Z E N O and sometimes X E N O. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, I, I got to talk about the show here. I, okay. I read through all the notes. I'm I, I'm now getting to the outline. Under 1B, you have correction. Are we correcting the show? Are we planning on messing up the show? <laughs> no, we actually already covered that oh, okay. in that it wasn't somebody emotionless, but rather someone who does have emotions. Oh, a correction of the unfeeling idea. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought we were just planning on messing up. I was like, well, we're really getting down to... <laughs> yeah. on, on all of my... We're on point here. From yeah. now on, my B statement is going to be correction of <laughs> <Yeah>. all of them. <laughs> yes. Because we're going to fuck up the first yeah. part, you know? So the ideas of Stoicism have actually been around since about 300 B.C., 
Um, starting with Zeno, who was a fun story. He actually kind of came up with this philosophy because he was a, a wealthy merchant, um, doing really well in his life, kind of had a lot going on for him, had accumulated a lot of material possessions, and then was shipwrecked um, on the shores of Greece and uh, kind of lost everything. Yeah, yeah. And um, after this, this, this wreck, kind of wandered into, some say a library, some say a bookstore in Athens, and began to read about the philosophy that the teachers there were actually teaching. So the things that had been written down, um, but were still being actively taught today. Um, you know, that's how I got into the Ramones. I wasn't oh. shipwrecked, but I've I, 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 I got I've got to throw this out here because because I can relate to this to an extent. It, while I wasn't shipwrecked, I was kind of meandering through the old uh, the old album store record mm -hmm. stores, and I came across this album of the Ramones, and I'd never heard them before. I was about nine years old, and they were the wildest, craziest looking people I ever saw, and I bought it <laughs> because of that, and I fell in love with Beat on the Brat, and yep. you know. Gilligan X has a very similar story too. Shut up! Oh. <laughs> Shut up! I, I, I'm trying to draw a a, a, a legitimate uh, a, a comparison here between myself and the great philosophers of the past. I don't think like they do, but I've been through an experience similar. <laughs> so, he asked somebody in the store, um, you Beat know, on the bread. who? On the... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now it's in my head. So, you wouldn't play. You wouldn't play a cheeseburger in paradise for me. I like tried you should have. to cheat. I tried to cheeseburger in paradise on double speed. It said the we had a chipmunks. minute and a half for a three minute song. It seemed appropriate. But anyway, <laughs> um, this is our show guys. This is what we do. So he asked somebody, um, so, you know, who is this Socrates and where can I find him? And they said, well, you know, he teaches over here. Um, poop, poop, Socrates. So he, he was a student of, so of Socrates and ended up actually incorporating several of Socrates' ideas into Stoicism, but putting his own little twist on it. Um, we then see Seneca um, in the uh, 4 to 6, 65 AD is when, when he is purported to have been around. So, or CE if you're, you know, I'm, I'm going to correct you. Now. Thank you. I appreciate C that. CE if you're, you know, under the age of 70. <laughs> Has it been around that long? Because yeah, I remember being taught in school AD. Were you really taught BC and AD? Yeah, I, I was, was taught BC and AD in high school. But by the time I got to college, it was, it was they were telling us that this is so old and so out of out of date. Well, and I yeah. think that's probably the, the the thing. It's not like, I mean, there is an aspect of your age, but I, I think the the high schools were just slower to catch up, and we see that generally with yeah, with yeah, a lot yeah, of things. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Uh, I figured by the time y'all were in, in, in high school you know, six <laughs> weeks ago that. Uh, they would, they, they would have Six been weeks ago, yeah. still going strong. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I remember being taught that, and it wasn't until um, college, which I went to much later than I was in high school, where I learned yeah. BCE. One week ago. And also one week ago, but also a couple <laughs> of years ago. Um, but uh, when I learned BCE and CE. Yeah, yeah. Before which I much prefer. And common era. I know you're not mic'd up, but Alex, CE or, or AD, what, what did you learn? AD. Okay, you so really? Learn, yeah, Alex learned AD. And, and Alex is 12, so that <laughs> tells us something. Uh, you graduated in what, 2010? 14. I was in 2014. Say so wow. in 2014, That's my it was brother. Still, I'm nine years younger than you. I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you, I, I've been teaching, teaching <laughs> that for. That would make for, sense. I've been teaching for 18 years, and I, my entire career, have taught taught at BCE and CE. So, uh, good for somebody you. Somebody is way behind. Good uh, for you. It's it, called Texas just, School. Just, just 30 miles away. Just, just, just for your own knowledge, those of you that weren't aware, I'm sure our, all of our listeners are. But the reason they shifted from uh, from BC and AD is is to get rid of the the, the Christian center the uh, religious, idea, yeah. and it's it's before the Common Era and Common Era, but it's the same days. It's yeah. still BC and AD. It's right. still it's still based on the. The birth of, of Christ. Anyway, so Seneca in 4 to 65 yeah. CE. CE, yep. yes. Um, and then moving along, we had Marcus Aurelius um, in 120, not long after. Uh, in fact, if I remember correctly, I believe Aurelius was a student of a student of Seneca, although I don't remember who the person was in between. Um, so Marcus Aurelius in 121 to 180 AD. And then we actually move on to Nelson Mandela. 
Yeah. Who, um, and and we'll kind of get into why this why stoicism provided some aid to Nelson Mandela mm-hmm. and a little a little later, but he attributes his ability to being able to um, survive the experience of being imprisoned. Uh, for so many years I, to I, reading Marcus Aurelius' yeah, writings, yeah. Uh, the me- meditation. I've got to tell you that, that that Nelson Mandela is is one of those men in history that's a hero to me. Mm-hmm. But his wife was a total bitch. I actually yeah, don't know anything yeah, about Winnie his wife. Mandela. She was uh, she she kind of took over the, the 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 African Congress when Nelson got uh, uh, like I know it Nelson when Mr. Mandela President Mandela got uh, imprisoned and she mm-hmm. was notorious for using terror tactics. For instance, uh, to to bring people to her side, it's alleged that she would tie them up and stack tires around them and light them on fire in order to 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 to, to use terror to bring people to her her way of thinking. What a bitch! Yeah, yeah, she was she was she's in prison now. Um, I, I believe she's she may be dead now. She, but Is she, Nelson still married to her? Nelson's dead. But, uh, but okay, so let me let me ask. But yes, he did way. stay he did stay okay. married to her. Uh, so. So, interesting idea. With that aside, which is is very interesting. Yeah, yeah, or um, at least extremely interesting. At least, yeah, yeah. reasonably interesting. This is I what don't our know show does. See, they bring something up that's pertinent, and Why? I Why chase a rabbit happening? and have to talk about it for a while. If you haven't seen our show before, this is what I do. This is my role: is to fuck up the rhythm of the show. So metaphysics. I'm breaking. I'm breaking the the, the, the third wall right now. I'm talking directly to the people, and you're interrupting me. So metaphysics. Um, and this is what she does. So in or so, I'm going to say so about 98 times. That's an underestimate during this episode. Uh, but anyway, stoicism is not only a philosophy, but it is also a way of life. And yeah. we've seen that a few times, particularly whenever we look at uh, some of the Eastern philosophies. Those tend to um, they tend toward also being a a practice that you can um, use in your everyday life. And stoicism has a lot of parallels to Buddhism, but it is not just a f- school of philosophy, but also a way in which you can live your life, and it is a practice. But to understand living stoically, what? Did we ever discuss why Stoicism was important to Nelson Mandela? Uh, yes. He, well, we were going to get there. We're not there yet. Oh, we're not there God yet. Sorry. Damn it, John. Sorry. I just, you, you, you mentioned Nelson Mandela. I thought we were there. Go yeah. ahead. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to that later. But so to understand living stoically. We like to bounce around a lot. <laughs> I feel defeated. Maybe I shouldn't Did let my, that impact my, work my here, actions. Yeah. My no. work here is complete. I, I won't let your dickery impact my actions. That is a great word. I love that word. <laughs> Sounds like a... Uh, God, I'm on a tangent now. I'm not going to do that. So anyway, uh, to understand living life stoically, you have to understand the philosophy of Stoicism, which uh, if you start with their metaphysics, they actually uh, were were kind of unique um, in that they believed that the universe was... Oh, okay, stop, stop. You can't be kind of unique. Unique means one of a kind. Either you're I'm unique you or you're not your unique. I'm going to fucking chair. That drives me nuts. You know I that. understand that it drives you nuts, but you are distracting from the point. No, but I, you, you just can't do that. You are still distracting from the point. That may be true, but it just drives me crazy. So anyway, it was unique in that they believed that all that existed was matter. Yeah. Um, you know, in an episode that we did on information... One of the things that I asserted was that, um, you know, that would actually fall in line with the idea that all information is a physical item. Yeah. Um, Either that or information doesn't exist Mm -hmm. is how the Stoics would uh, would classify it. Whereas kind of my determination there that ideas were not necessarily physical, but everything else was and that a lot of information is, but ideas are not a piece of information that's not physical. Um, Describing it as a piece, I guess, would... Would kind of defeat that. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, broadly, I, I think it's a safe bet that while there was a foundational uh, building uh, from Stoicism that led to hypotheses later in science, um, Lawrence Lee, modern understanding, has rejected their science but accepted their ethics mm-hmm. or, yeah, or well, accepted some of their ethics, you know, some as of a, it, yeah. But they've rejected their science, the idea that. Uh, uh, 
that 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 all that exists is matter is that but they're they're rejecting what yeah we're, yeah okay yeah. all right um so stoicism unlike some of the other philosophies does allow for a god a creator although it does not actually necessarily um require it describe that god as a, a person but yeah. rather as a force yeah um and and that force is called numa um very 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 buddhistic in the in the thought there the kind of dharma and karma and, yes. yeah 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 um so numa was the uh breath force and to parallel it to Christianity is much like like the breath of life. Um, so, you know, God breathed life into the universe, and, and that's a lot of what Numa was, although... Let, 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 let me ask you this. I'm, I'm, I know I keep interrupting you, and I'm sorry, but it, it's just me trying to understand mm -hmm. something. Is, well, this isn't a monologue. Is, is, is Numa uh, uh, comparable to uh, like God the Spirit? You talk about, about the Father, the Son, and the, and the Holy Spirit. Is, is, is that what, what we're talking about? Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's similar to that, I suppose. Okay, yeah. I, I'm just I'm trying to put it in the language that I understand, and, mm -hmm. and, and other, uh, you know, idiots out there like me can understand. Yeah. Uh, I'm not I'm not at all bad mouthing our audience, but I am an idiot, and I figure there are others out there. So, well, you know, there are idiots, and there are geniuses, and there are people all in between. And if we're reaching the kind of audience that we hope that this show reaches, I would imagine there's. A mix of all of this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I try and break things down pretty simple here. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, so Numa is uh, the breath of the universe. And Stoics believe that um, the universe is organized in the most logical and most reasoned way. Um, and so in this, it kind of lends itself towards some, some determinism, although we'll start to understand later that Stoics also seem to uh, fall somewhere in the middle on the uh, determinism free will spectrum in that they do also uh, believe in a certain amount of, of choice that can be made. Yeah, so, something that, that I found, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but their god Numa was actually more of a state of matter than it was what we think of as a god. It, it was this yeah, fiery, it, burning, uh, energy type substance. And, and which is kind of why I. I, I, I talk about the spirit as, as, yeah, as something there but but where i wanted to to draw a distinction from what you were saying is they i think we would equate them modernly much more with deism i don't think i, I think they considered it the life force but i don't think they considered that it had a will that it was making like decisions about the universe so it was just kind of the life force it's more like the force in the star wars movies yes in fact uh, I've, I've heard it described like that in one of my research places. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that's interesting to me. Yeah, it, it is very similar to that. Um, can can I can I back up a little bit? And if if, if you're going to get to it later, correct me. But I want to I want to back up. I'm, I'm looking over the notes here, and I've talked about Zeno of Cyprus early on, and it, it says on here that that he wanted to focus on himself first in order to help others. Yeah, yeah, that, what, that was in my notes. How does how does how does that come into here? Well, and, and and that wasn't that wasn't actually towards Zeno. That was like two separate notes: one on Zeno, one on helping yourself. But Stoics uh, believe that you couldn't help others in society unless you first brought yourself yes. to an emotionally stable place. So the thing I equate to is you're on the airplane. And, and and they say you know put your mask on for you put someone else's on and stoics would have would have agreed with that that uh the first thing you need to do is get yourself to the right place internally and then you can you can help spread wisdom to others okay yeah i think that that, that was my understanding and yeah. i wanted to kind of throw that out there and make sure that we were clear there that the idea of of helping yourself is in fact helping the greater good yeah yeah, yeah. okay i'm sorry go go right ahead I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm trying to understand as we go through here, and that's that's tough for me. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, Numa is a force and um, and orders the world in the most rational and logical way, and it it was held that the reason that uh, that humans have a, a certain amount of free will was that they have an, an amount of pneuma in themselves. Um, and this pneuma was the thing that would allow a person, once they sort of tapped into it, 
to live stoically. Um, they would be able to reach their pneuma, which was the thing that ordered the universe in the most logical and rational way. Um, and in tapping into that, when presented with a circumstance that for someone who is not in touch with their pneuma um, would be able to react to it in the most logical and reasonable fashion rather than allowing their passions to take hold and to lose control. Yeah, uh, I find so much comfort in this idea. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if it's right, but I find so much comfort in this, this, this concept. Um, it, it's something that that's that's appealing mm -hmm. to me, and I think it would be appealing to a lot of people. And I think part of the reason it appeals to me is 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 my Judeo Christian background. Yeah, I mean, think of it as your personal relationship with God. Yeah, yeah. Think of it as God in you. Um, it, it's very similar to those ideas. Um, so interestingly, here we know that Socrates spoke a lot about ethics. Um, we know a bit about er, about virtue, sorry. Um, we talked previously about virtue ethics and the idea of the golden mean, um, where you were supposed to do what was... That was Plato. Yeah, that one... That, sorry, no, that, that, that well, was... Same <laughs> time Anytime frame. you're doing Plato and Socrates, you've right. got to have some question because I don't think it was Plato either, but... Aristotle. Aristotle, Aristotle but, yeah. But Aristotle. Again, you've got Socrates, Socrates taught Plato, Plato, Plato Aristotle. taught Aristotle. So, yeah. Still the same time frame. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, yeah, and... and, and so many of those overlap, and what do they get from their their you know their teachers? Yeah, yeah. well, and it, yeah. So anyway, um, but we talk about that and the idea of doing the right thing at the right time in the right way to the right degree. Yeah. Whereas um, Stoics actually believed that virtue could only be achieved by doing the most logical and rational thing at any given time. Um, now it was interest. It was interesting because they seemed to kind of give themselves an out, as it were, um, in that you may do something in a given circumstance that seems irrational, but is really rational um, if you kind of look underneath the surface. And while I can agree that that somebody's decision may seem irrational and actually be entirely rational, in fact, if you look. Uh, back to our episode on suicide, we discussed the rationality of suicide um, and and how it is that that could uh, be a rational choice and seem completely irrational. Let, let, let me ask you this, uh, because while, log while I agree uh, that the only way to achieve virtue is through logic and reason, I, I, can, I can understand that. Can you then flip that the other way and say that if you act logically through reason that you must attain be virtue. Virtuous. Yes. Because if that's the case, uh, I'm going to give you a problem here. Can you tell me okay. if it's virtuous or not? There's an overpopulation problem. There are too mm -hmm. many people for the resources. So logic and reason says we should kill half the people. Mm -hmm. Is killing half the people then virtuous under this system? I think that some Stoics would say yes. Well, and, 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 well, and I think you have to consider, are there other solutions? Yeah, so, so I, I think... I think the reason that that pro that question becomes so problematic is that the logic of killing half the I think the logical thing to do is to increase your resource output, right? Um, and, and and there's a bunch of assumptions baked into it that that's not possible, you know, yada yada. But but we see in situations where, where that becomes true, we can we can flip the situation just slightly. And see that it does become a logical or virtuous thing. For instance, um, you're in a pit with a bunch of guys and a grenade comes in and then somebody sacrifices themselves because it's, I must reduce the number in here. And we or, would say that's a virtuous act. Or, or yeah. we'll all die. Uh, same kind of thing where uh, we, we see many movies where somebody's going to have to die for one reason or another, so they draw lots on who's going to have to die. And it becomes virtuous then, and, and I think the reason people have problem with that is we we have seldom in our history encountered a situation where that really was a logical well, choice. Yeah, well, that, that, that's what I was going to get to, is, is you have to assume that the logic and reason are correct. Yeah. You know, Hitler's final solution, his, he logically said that the problem the Germans had was there were too many Jews, 
Uh, his reason, or logically, there are too many Jews. His reason, reasoning behind that was the Jews were eating the resources. His solution was the final solution, kill the Jews. Well, that doesn't make it virtuous because his first preposition, or pre presupposition was wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, his logic and his reason weren't correct to begin with. Yeah. 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 I mean, if, if, if we look at the situation another way, and we say that, you know, look, look at the, the, the Irish famine. I forget what it's called. The potato famine. The potato famine. And, and, and we know that this is 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 pushed through by governments and, and it, it's somewhat artificial. But we have the potato famine here. And somebody somebody says, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose all my family or, or I got to lose a part of them. Uh, now, maybe that person says, well, then what we need to do is I need to kill myself, right? But maybe the situation is more complicated. Maybe if they kill themselves, then the others can't fend for themselves. And we, we look back. We actually did a show, and I forget which one it was, where when a baby, it looked like they were going to be a burden on the family or weren't going to live. They took it out to the woods and let the yeah, fairies yeah. deal with it. Yeah. Uh, I think we can look at, on that act with some a semblance of sympathy to say this wasn't something they wanted to do. They weren't excited about killing their baby. That's what um, the Hansel and Gretel theory yeah. tells about. Yeah, yeah. but uh, that they, they felt it the only way to save the rest of their family. And I think when we look at it in that context, it, it becomes a lot more obvious the virtue of the act. Yeah, it, yeah. it was a virtuous act. It wasn't the right right act. Well, and it, was, so, it was virtuous for, the, for, for what the information they had was. Yeah. So the thing that a lot of the ancient Greek philosophy was trying to answer was how to reach eudaimonia, um, which is oftentimes described or, or translated as happiness, um, which in recent-ish recent years has been thought to be a misinterpretation and that a better... Uh, translation of that would be human flourishing so your example it would also be a great stripper name no we no. have eudaimonia coming up on okay stage i thought you meant human flourishing and i was like no because i think that would kind of lend toward reproduction which doesn't <laughs> seem like appealing for a stripper but that's a whole other thing i don't know eudaimonia i think that i think that works so anyway um human flourishing so in the situation that you you presented of you know, we're running out of resources and killing off a third of the population will alleviate that. Um, I, I think, you know, assuming that there is no other solution would be deemed a virtuous act to achieve eudaimonia. If your logic, well, if your logic was correct coming up. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's yeah. If, yeah. if there were no other solutions and that was, in fact, the only one that would make, make it a virtuous act. Um so in order to achieve eudaimonia, which is not simply flourishing for yourself, but as, as translated as human flourishing, which invokes an idea of society, you have to live stoically. Um, hinted, to, hinted at earlier was that helping yourself reaching that, that point of effectively living a stoic life does in fact lend to you... Um, being a good on others. Uh, shit, I totally forgot where I was saying, but I was trying to transition to, let's rate this beer. Let's do it. Let's rate this beer. You want me to start this one? You can. We are drinking Om Gang uh, from, what? what's the brewery of this one? Is it, no, We're it's Om Gang. Is Om Gang Sa Brewery. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, in, uh, in in Cooperstown, New York. Yeah, this is Henny Pin Saison L. Henny Pin Saison L. Um let me get a get a quick drink here. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I like the most about it first. Uh, I love the smell of it as it, 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 as you it, as it's reaching your mouth. I think it's got a got a got a very uh, uh, spicy smell and it, it's it's appealing. What I like the most about it is the, it smells like it tastes. You can smell it and you know what you're going going to get. Mm -hmm. um, I think they got the texture about right on this one. Uh, it's not too thick. It's not too thin. Um, it fills the mouth well. Mm -hmm. I think they got the uh, uh, the carbonation done, done very well. Uh, it's got a nice bell curve to it to me. I, 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 it, it starts starts very simple. It rises up and gets a full flavor and then cuts back off slowly at the end, which is what I'm looking for in a beer. So uh, all of those things are, are uh, I think, outstanding for this beer. I think there's a couple of weaknesses in here. Uh, to me... It's it's 
it can't decide if it wants to be a full flavored spicy beer or not. So there's there's a lot of of, of undertones of, of citrus and spices inside there, but it doesn't feel like there's enough for it to be a big spicy beer. Uh, it, it's kind of like a halfway measure to me. Um, I'd like it to either have less or more, if that makes any sense, one way or the other. It seems like it's kind of lost in the middle in there. Um, and the bottle's uglier than hell. I don't like the bottle. I can't. I can't see anything on it. Uh, maybe my vision, but it's it's beautiful. It's, you just can't see it. it I, I I don't I don't I don't like the label on the yeah. bottle, and that's part of the experience of, uh, of of a beer for me too. I'm gonna give it a pretty good ranking because uh, th this is a beer that I would drink regularly. I would go I would go find this beer again. I suspect I'm gonna be higher than either one of you are. I could yeah. be wrong, but I'm gonna give it a, a high for me. I'm gonna give it a three one. All right, John. Three point one. Okay, I'll go ahead. Uh, I agree with you on the bottle. Ugly bottle. Ugly design. I've never been a fan of any of Om, Om Gong's work. Is it Om Gang or Om Gong? I think it's Om Gong. I don't okay. know. Okay. Anyway. Um, nom, 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 nom. <coughs> but yeah, I, I can agree on the artwork. I, where I'm, I, I'm gonna agree with a lot of your early critiques too. Rather, uh, uh, compliments. Maybe a better word for that. Um, where I'm gonna disagree with you is on the spice level. I, I think it hits the mark. I think it is uh, uh, well balanced. I, I think it's not slapping your tongue with with spice. To you know, you, you drink some things that are so spicy and not in like the capsaicin way, but got so many spices, your tongue gets sore after drinking. I don't. Yeah, I don't think yeah. th this is that, but it's it, it, it's pleasant. Uh, um, you 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 get to go through the flavors. I think the the seasoning is well balanced on this. Uh, on our last beer, I, I critiqued it uh, that it was light on the palate. Uh, this one is perfect. I think I think it has a, a medium uh, palate gravity. It it comes in smooth, like you said on bell curve, but you 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 get a height of flavor that's not overwhelming, but I I, I think a, a a pleasant experience that reminds you you're drinking a beer and a good beer. That I like this beer. Um, However, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to get up into the 4.0s. I think uh, if I see this beer again, I'll, I'll remember that's a good beer. But I'm, if somebody asks me, you know, what what are your favorite beers? I don't think this makes the list. And and uh, it's unfortunate because I can't point to the reasons why. It's just not quite there. I like the thickness. Uh, it has some sediment, but that can be expected in a uh, farmhouse saison. Um, so all in all, I you know, get, get to the meat of this. I'm going to give it a 3.2. I didn't come out much higher than you on the number. Um, but I, it's it's odd because I'm only giving it a 3.2, which is which is a high uh, rating. Well, 2.5 two five, two five is your standard. Yeah. So this is this is well above standard. But if I was asked, like, what would this need to hit the 4 mark to hit you know, on up there? I couldn't uh, I couldn't point to the thing that's necessary. In what do you think of the smell of it? Did you did, did you catch that idea that, 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 that you could... You could taste it with a smell. It, it, it had a, a subtle but consistent smell to it uh, that I liked, um, it, it, but it wasn't like one of those features that really just popped out at me. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I noticed it, but it, it wasn't like a uh, a big deal to me. Whenever I so for myself, I'm going to give it a two point four. I think it's really? heavy on the spices and um, heavy, heavy on the spices okay. and weak on the wheat. Um, it's fine. It's not an unpleasant drink, but it is not something that I would. I, it's not something that I would purchase again. Um, it, it's not something that if I was at a bar that had. 12 beers available and three of them were actual craft beers and this was one of them if the other two were by um revolver brewing company or whatever it was yep. i'd pick this one um if the other two were by carbock brewing company i'd pick this one if one of the other two was adelbert's and the other one was odell i would pick either of the other two Okay. So interesting. I uh, I actually bumped that up from by point three, just because um, it's not a bad beer. I just think that they've over seasoned it. <laughs> what I find interesting or, is, is it's is, is, overly spicy. What I find interesting about this rating uh, from all three of us is 
we all addressed the spices and we all got something different out of this, which, mm -hmm. which goes to show you that that beer is something it is that, a that is thing. a very personal thing. Let me ask you, because because I said I'm only giving it a three, two, but I can't tell you what they need to do to make it better. Could you tell them how to make this beer better? Uh, I, I want it to be a weedier taste. Um, I, I think it does have a good level of carbonation. Um, I think it's a little heavy on the mouthfeel, so something a little bit lighter would be good. Um, pull back on the, on your coriander and orange peel. Um, so it describes itself as, uh, having flavors of ginger, coriander, orange peel, and grains of paradise. Um, and, and I think those are, there's too much of the coriander orange peel taste. And I actually wrote down early on in the show, it tastes oddly buttery to me. Like they put like butter on something that shouldn't have butter on it. Hmm. It's, it just is odd tasting. I'm, not getting, I'm not getting, I am getting a cream in there, which maybe yeah, what that, that is. Maybe. Uh, well, it describes uh, but, itself as a creamy, uh, yeah. anyway. Uh, so. So, yeah, yeah. I could do without that. I would, I would definitely suggest this to my friends, though. I, I, I think it's, I think it's worth drinking. It's worth buying. I would yeah. buy it again. If somebody picked it up and was like, should I get this beer? I'd be like, there are other beers that I'd recommend above this one, but I don't think you'll be unhappy with yeah, this one. You'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy It'll it. be fine. So let's, let's play our game. What is our game that we play at this point? Uh, fuck date lawnmower. Fuck date lawnmower. Who wants to start this one? Well, let's go in order. Fuck. No. Nope. No. No, I don't. I think that if. Well, what's the ABV? 7.7. 7. 7. Then yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that if. If this is the beer that you're drinking on a date, it might lend a little bit in your favor. Um, but I think that's more because you have branched into the craft territory and not so much because of this particular beer itself. Um, I, I think it's more the name. Of course, Om Gong is kind of a big yeah, yeah, yeah. brewery, good, good brewery. In, the, in the craft uh, in the craft scene. It's not going to be some hole in the wall type place it is one of the bigger ones um but i do think it's going to get you a little bit of points as far as branching into this i don't think that it's going to be the thing that seals the deal for you by any okay. means I, i've described this before and i think i'm just going to make it its own category this is a try it beer so uh, on a lot of these beers i'll say use on the first date use on the third date you know you use an exploration date and with those I, i'm i'm really kind of speaking to you have a plan to impress or not to impress like you have a plan with this. Uh, I think we can see, and I, th I would have said this anyway, but I think it's apparent in the ratings that uh, this one is not is not a sure bet for you as mediocre or as good or where it's going to go. So uh, I think you could use this beer to have a conversation, though. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, uh, when you go into a place or, or when maybe they're done with their beer, you say, hey, you want to try something new? try this let me know what you think but don't approach this beer as you're gonna love this or you're gonna hate this yeah. or whatever i think this is definitely a try it beer i'm gonna make that its own category and so for on which date i, I think you know it's it's either it's going to be one of two things either really early in the relationship where you're trying to find out about each other and build those relationships so like an exploration thing or later in the relationship when you're trying to do something new and, and you're kind of comfortable with each other. Yeah. I think either of those is fine. By the time the blindfolds and handcuffs come out, this would be a really good beer. Yeah, absolutely. Get this beer, get a blindfold and <laughs> handcuffs and see where you sit. So, uh, As far as a lawnmower beer goes, I, this is a tough one because I think it's light enough for a lawnmower beer uh, as far as smoothness. But 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 I, I I think it's too complex. I don't mm -hmm. think it's something that you want to drink while you're while you're out mowing the yard. It it's something I want it's to drink. It's something that's got to be enjoyed by itself. Yeah yeah. yeah. I, I'll tell you what this beer is to me. This is uh, uh and this is this is a new category here. But this is the beer I want in a smoky piano bar while I'm smoking a cigar. I think this would be a oh, good yeah. beer for that when there, there, there's a little jazz music playing in the background. And I when I've had a bad day, this is a good beer for that. Yeah. Uh, so I. I this would be this would be a good choice for me. It's not so heavy that you're going to be weighted down, but it's got a good flavor. I'm yeah. with this you. This is not my bad day beer. When I've had a bad day, if I'm going for a beer, which is unlikely, 
If I've had a bad day, this is not my beer. See, I don't want a heavy, heavy beer when no. I've had a bad day because I'm, I'm, I'm just going to depress myself. This is going to keep me upbeat. I'll be okay. Mm. Well, it's 7.7, so, so I don't have too many of them. They don't have too many, but you're not going to feel weighted yeah. down afterwards. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so uh, if I have several of these, I'm not going to feel like shit afterwards. Yeah. So. And well, I guess if I'm if I'm having a bad day to the degree that I'm going to be drinking several of something, um, I'm not going to be drinking beer I called, anyway. I called that my 20s. So, yeah. you know, if, we if I'm having a bad it, day to where I, I come home and I'm like, fuck this day, I'm getting a drink. It's not this. <laughs> if I if I come home and I'm saying, fuck this day and all yeah, the but, days in front of it. But if you had a bad, I'm done. If either it's, one of you had a, a bad day, day and you showed up at the pool hall and I pulled this out and said, "Let's play pool and let's work our way through this," I'd be there for the pool and the people. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd be there for the beer. Yeah. I'd yeah. be there for all of it. But yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. Yeah. yeah I wouldn't turn the beer down. Yeah. yeah. Still okay. not going to turn the beer down. So, um, we've talked a bit about uh, what the philosophy of Stoicism is now. The Stoics believed that the this philosophy needed to be practiced. Each person needed to live a Stoic life. And there were four main pillars of Stoicism. <laughs> the first being... Pra <laughs> Are you done? I think I'm allergic to you. Okay. I don't even know what to say. <sighs> I'm, I don't have another explanation. I mean, I, I'm sitting next to you and I'm sneezing. I think I'm allergic to you. I think it's spring. You know, it's fine. So practical yes, the wisdom. the season of love. I'm allergic to you. I'm so confused. So practical Maybe wisdom. Maybe it's John. Um, <laughs> Did you want to say something? Maybe. I'll shut up now. I don't even know anymore. There is an eraser on there. Okay. <laughs> um, so the first tenet of living a Stoic life is to utilize practical wisdom. So the Stoics believed that you should always be um, attaining new information. And by always always learning and always seeking to improve yourself um, through new knowledge, you were able to eventually achieve perfect logic and reason, perfect rationality, um, <laughs> and you were going to be able to use those tools to analyze any given circumstance that you may find yourself in and determine how best to react to that situation, what the best method was to move forward. Um, any comments on that before I move on to number two? Well, I think that makes sense. I think yeah. it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's good common sense argument. I, I think it's something that we see imp uh, advocated for, even if we don't see it implemented. Yeah. Every, now, the next today. one we may have some, some, some discussion about. Yeah. So the second pillar of stoicism is temperance. Um, this is self-restraint <laughs> and moderation. I have problems. You'll notice none of us here are stoics after we were talking about what exactly we were going to be drinking on our <laughs> shit days. Um so self-restraint and moderation, obviously. Well, let me ask, would a Stoic believe that this is just the way you should be? Or does a Stoic have room? Because I believe in Stoicism in a certain position. For instance, I try and practice Stoicism when I'm presiding over a meeting, but I don't necessarily feel the need to be a Stoic when I'm at home Talking to you, for instance. You're a situational <laughs> yeah. Stoic. Yeah. yeah, Stoics, to live a Stoic life is to apply these these pillars and seek these um, ideals in all facets of your life. Okay, okay. Um, so, yes, they would expect yeah, I would that, with that. I would, too, honestly. Yeah. It'd um, be tough for anyone, I think. And I kind of consider myself a Stoic in a lot of ways. Well, and, and we'll... We'll get to why it's okay to still consider yourself a Stoic. Um, so, for example, um, oh, fuck, I don't remember who said this. One of the Stoics said um, that you should not eat to live, you should live to eat. Um, so, in a time when food was plentiful and many people were kind of gorging themselves and, and something, yes, well, you said you sh uh, uh, sh should not uh, uh, eat to live. You said it backwards. Did I? Yeah. You should yeah. eat to live, not live to eat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, 
In a time when food was plentiful and people were gorging themselves, the Stoics advocated rather that you should not put fancy seasonings and salts on your food, um, that you shouldn't be gaining pleasure out of food, that the sole reason that you should be putting nutrients into your body is to perpetuate yeah, your I'm, life. I'm not a Stoic then. I, 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 that, that's, that was not my understanding of them. Uh, I, I, I interpreted that to be, you know, don't don't uh, gorge yourself, don't overdo something, don't that too much pleasure is a bad thing too. Well, and so it's interesting because one of the things now I think this is a very physical way for a person seeking to live a stoic life to exemplify that. So some of the other other pillars of stoicism. Um, are a little bit more abstract, whereas this one is is kind of very easily defined in a physical sense, and so I think it's it's probably the place it, at which you can enter, um, or if you're entering it at one of the other points, you can use this as a means to to measure how effective you're being. In fact, oh, go ahead. I'm in waiting. fact, the uh, the Stoics, many of them advocated for. Uh, periods of self-deprivation. Uh, for instance, uh, stripping yourself of uh, very Diogenes-esque. Yeah, I was thinking of Diogenes in this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, of course, they would they would have condemned him for allowing his his emotions, uh, his passions, he to met, overtake he, him. He, he met one of the, uh, the, the, the right. requirements. Yeah. So, um, stripping yourself of your clothing. Uh, casting off for a period all of your possessions, um, in, including don't sleep in a bed, like sleep on the floor, um, don't feed yourself, um, you know, don't don't use any of the comforts of your everyday life for a period of time um, to sort of remind yourself that there's very little that you actually need to achieve eudaimonia um, within yourself. We actually see people exhibiting this sort of behavior when you get away from it all. When you go on a trip and you turn off your phone and you escape. Amen. Maybe you're camping, maybe you're hiking, maybe you're just traveling to a faraway land where nobody knows you and you're just escaping. Um, and you're maybe you're backpacking through Europe and all you have with you is the shit in the backpack that you're carrying with you. You know, I never um, associated that with stoicism, but for years, every year I would take a trip and I would take a backpack and, mm -hmm. and a copy of William Shakespeare's folio and nothing else. Mm -hmm. And I would go out and I didn't want anybody to contact me for yeah. four or five days. I would backpack the backcountry. Yeah, uh, and, and they would have used that as a way to remind yourself that maybe you do have all of these to possessions, but that you don't actually need any of those. And... And part of Stoicism was not necessarily not having those things, but not needing those things. Which I like that theory. Yeah. I like that idea that, that, that it's about recognizing that you really have what you need. Yeah. That if, if you walked into your home one day and you had been robbed so that nothing else was in there, you wouldn't lose your temper and fly into a rage, you wouldn't break down and start crying, you would look at it and you would say, I'm fine. I will, first, I will, I will make it through this. I still have more than I need and it's fine. Everything is going to be okay. Um, now, interestingly, and we'll go into hope and, uh, disappointment later, but, um, the Stoics are, you know, fuck it. We'll just go into that later, and we'll move on to. You had something you wanted to say. Yeah, I did. So, so this talks about self-deprivation and uh, eat to live and uh, don't live to eat. Uh, I, I know we don't necessarily have one of the original Stoics here, but something I would love to ask them is, you know, you take food, and and that is a mechanism for survival. And you take possessions, and that is a mechanism for survival. And really, you take everything here, and you say, can I live without it? Yes, then you don't need that because it's not a mechanism for survival. Can I not? Then that is something you need because it's there to survive. 
uh, something I would love to ask these people is, but why are you surviving? Like, for what purpose is that? Well, and that was actually interesting. Um, so part of the reason that you are continuing to survive is to um, help achieve eudaimonia. Um, again, that is the goal of many of the ancient Greek philosophies is to achieve eudaimonia. And so your perpetuated life is to contribute to the eventual achievement of that. Um, and in fact... So the heaven theory, just in different... Kind of. But in fact, um, Stoics were not opposed to offing yourself. Um, if you were in a situation, what? Not getting yourself off. I was just thinking, she's talking about killing herself, not masturbation. So just for clarification. They weren't opposed to that either, just so you know. As long as it did not elicit any passion. <laughs> yeah. As long as it was very... Uh, well, mechanical, you know. An impassionate <laughs> orgasm. Impassionate. That is the perfect... With no emotional connection. Yeah. I am done now. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't don't let your right hand catch you with your left hand, you know? Right. <laughs> so anyway, they were not op opposed to suicide. If you found yourself in a situation that you just did not think that you could pass through. <laughs> um, in, in fact, suicide was viewed as kind of freedom. Like you're not obligated to live this life. You do have the option of of killing yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so uh, you do have a purpose, but if that purpose ever ceases to um, ceases to be something that you can contribute to achieving, there is just kill yourself. It's fine. So by that logic, anyone who reaches eudaimonium should kill themselves. Well, you've made your goal. You have, you have no more purpose. You have to maintain eudaimonia, too. Uh, there, there's the key. There's yeah, the key. because if you live for a period of... That's of, always my problem with masturbation, too, is the maintaining part. <laughs> if for 30 years you live a life of stoicism and you reach peak stoic mastery... Yep. <laughs> God damn it, guys. And We um, love you. We love you. And... You know, you have contributed to those around you reaching that, and and society does in fact reach a point of eudaimonia. If you stop living stoically, you no longer have eudaimonia. Well, if we all kill ourselves, we all go out eudaimoniously. Yeah, if if everybody knocked themselves off at that point, um, very did uh, it. Very Jewish uh, uh, zealot idea of. of you know, we're as good. It's as good as it's going to be, and 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 we we should take ourselves out. Yeah. Or Branch Davidian, or yeah. uh, you know, I can see a lot of these ideas in in doomsday cults and stuff. I really can. Yeah. So the third pillar um, of living a stoic life is justice. Um, interestingly, so it was to be fair to those who have done wrong. Now, interestingly, it was not a a pacifist philosophy. Um, no, fair doesn't mean you'll like it. Exactly. So they didn't necessarily mean that you should treat well other pe treat well people who have done wrong to you. Um, I used but, to when I was a high school principal. I used to tell my students that all the time. I will be fair, but fair does not mean you're going to like what my decision is. Exactly. Um, so it it was not <coughs> not at all. And in fact, many people misinterpret stoicism as a, a pacifist yeah. practice. Um, but a, a stoic would agree that ostracism was not a, a problem if it was a, a fair application. Um, we can come up with the numerous other scenarios, but the fourth pillar I find to be interesting. And it's another thing that we actually see in in ap applied today, and it's courage. Now, um, the Stoics would I like this one. Yeah, the the Stoics would say that the courageous person isn't the person put into a fantastical situation 
uh, you know, a, a building is burning and they run in to pull that last person out, that that is a courageous act, but that that is not all that courage is. And it's not any more courageous than just uh, facing your everyday life, uh, you know, with, 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 with uh, I don't know what the word is. Integrity. Integrity. Yeah. Um, so, so what they, they advised was facing your daily cha challenges with integrity. So when you have the opportunity, maybe you have the opportunity to lie and know that you're not going to get away with it or cheat. And, and you're really sure that you could do it and nobody would know and you would be advantaged. But the true stoic will still not do it. But to be, to live a stoic life, you have to be courageous enough to still do the right thing, the logical, reasoned thing, uh, the I virtuous want, thing. I want to be that guy. Yeah. I do. I, I'm not. I, I, but, but, I, but I want to be yeah. that guy. So... Um, I wish I was. <laughs> you, you've probably seen a, a fun little image with a quote on it. Um, don't remember what it says, but it essentially says that, like, come the fuck on. Failure is okay. Yep. And, and the Stoics actually, they really embraced failure. Um, it was okay. You could learn so much from failure that you couldn't necessarily learn from success to the degree that they advocated pursuing uh, uh, pursuing situations in which you were likely to fail. Um, so, you know, asking for that raise with that boss who's never given anybody a raise in 10 years. You know, do it anyway. Don't judge me. <laughs> Are you the person asking or the person not giving raises? Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. In um, different lives, yes. <laughs> but, you know, any, any number of things. Um, but, you know, they viewed... Every, every failure, every chance to um, a, a chance to prove your integrity as an act of courage. When you fail, picking yourself back up and moving on, that was an act of courage. Um, and and I think that we see that preached if we don't see it <laughs> exemplified over and over again, uh, even today. So even if we're not practicing all of the pillars of, of Stoicism, I think we do see its impact a lot today. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, so, oh, eh, we'll move on. That's not necessary. So one of the things that I wanted to discuss was hope and disappointment as they relate to Stoicism. Um, Stoics were starkly against false hope. Well, hope at all, really. Um, when you were in a bad situation, maybe you were facing jail time, um, were adamantly opposed to something that we see a lot. It's going to be okay. You know what? It's fine. You're not going to go to jail. They're not going to, they're not going to convict you, whatever the case may be. When logic and reason would indicate that, yeah, they're probably going to convict you and you're going to go to jail. And... Um, you know, it's, it's not going to be good. It's going to fucking suck, actually. Um, that false reassurance was something, that false reassurance that gave people hope was something that Stoics vehemently disliked. Um, and they sought to avoid disappointment. Um, and in fact, John, you'll recognize this. Um, the Stoics sought to avoid disappointment by making sure that their expectations, that there was not a gap between their expectations and reality. Um, in fact, uh, Seneca would wake up each day. I'm not going to try to quote what he actually said, but essentially would wake up each day and go, you know what? I am going to meet good people and bad people today. I am going to interact with people who wish me harm and people who wish me health. And, you know, it is equally as likely that I'm going to interact with someone today who is going to give me a million dollars as it is that I am going to, or, well, maybe not a million. That, that's a bad example, actually. I, 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 would, equal, I would like that one. It is as equal that someone is going to open a door for me today as it is that someone is going to betray me today. Yeah. And to always expect 
that it's gotta be bad very things are going to happen. Very comforting to 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 enter life that way, knowing I'm going to have good things, I'm going to have bad things, and for every and bad okay. thing, there's probably a good thing. Yeah. So just wait for the next one. And so when somebody betrays you, it's a lot easier when you're expecting betrayal, not to fly off the handle about it, to go. Yeah, bitch, I knew you were going to do that. Yeah. I, I, I wish I wish I could be that person. Yeah. I do. It, it's tough. I, however, will bury you. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. Um, but I, I find it interesting because while we've identified several instances where Stoic philosophy is preached in society, I think we also see a lot of... Uh, we kind of see a counter of eternal hope. In fact... Um, the American dream is hope embodied. Um, it's also a myth. Absolutely. Many of our American ideals, yeah. though, are all about hope. Yeah, yeah. And that would infuriate the Stoics. Well, it, it wouldn't. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it would be... It would puzzle them. It would be antithetical to Stoicism. Um and they she would, had to correct me with a bigger vocabulary word. And and they would advise... Get your medicine. <laughs> they would advise that it was uh, dangerous yeah. to, to subscribe, sub, subscribe to this hope because hope is a, a feeling that leads to passion and yeah. passion leads to... And that's not just happy passion. That's also angry passion. That's sad passion. That is breaking down sobbing. That is jumping up and down, screaming with glee. And that is throwing shit, breaking shit, and angry as fuck. That passion leads to illogical, irra irrational responses. Which is absolutely true. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. think that it's wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would actually disagree with that to some extent. Of course you would. Yeah. Um, You're John. Well, hey. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've, I've seen studies that show that uh, seemingly rational responses have deep rationality built into them. For instance, um, somebody gets really angry. And decides to kill the entire family of their enemies, right? Now, one might say, well, wouldn't it make a lot more sense to kill the one enemy that is, is a problem for you and not, not, invest, if you're Italian. not invest the resources and, and the entire family and all this? Uh, Sorry, but that Italy. We just lost all of our Italian yeah. listeners. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how many that was. All of New York. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know? um, but but you, you you may say that that seems irrational. It would be yeah. much more rational to kill this one person. Uh, but what they've they've found when they do the the sociological studies of it is that the rationality is that your unpredictability is its own deterrent. Yeah. To 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 future actions by others. Mm -hmm. If they think you might kill my whole family, it's a bigger deterrent than I may be sacrificing my own life and going after you. Depends so, on whether you like your family or not. Yeah. Yeah. So while there may not be a surface rationality, this this A to B to C, the irrationality itself plays a big role in the overall. Does that make sense? It does. Well, it, but let, let me ask you this. If, if I make an Italian mad, can I pick the members of my family that they go after or do they have to go, go take all of them? See, that might pick. actually be a benefit. Like because if you could, it, yeah. It, I mean, I, I, if, if I you can could go, implicate here's, the appropriate here's members a list. of your family. Here's a list mm -hmm. of who I really don't want you to get. You know? Yeah. Oh, don't, don't go <laughs> Whatever after. Whatever you do, don't go after this guy. Don't go after racist <laughs> Uncle Joe. Yeah, that would be... <laughs> You get so, one of those two? Okay. Well, yeah, I think we I think it's part of the family dynamic. So I, I think that you you sort of mischaracterized here because one of the things that we discussed earlier on was that um, a, a stoic would recognize that some choices may seem irrational but actually are rational underneath. Mm -hmm. And so that, that still flows with stoicism. Does it still meet rationality if it serves a sociological function? But the person doing it cannot identify that. They don't know, but actually in the grand scheme of things, it does. Is it rationality? I don't know. 
I think that's I think that's the cop out clause in there that you know we all have that cop out clause where, where you know this is bad except in this case well yeah. I think yeah. that's what that is for that hmm. uh, um, you know whatever you do in Christianity whatever you do do not kill do not kill do not kill except when the Samaritans are attacking go ahead and blow your bugle and kill everybody yeah abortion know? is bad unless your wife is unfaithful and you have the preacher concoct this thing that will make her have an abortion yeah yeah De death is bad unless it's the death penalty yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there's uh, I fall on that one so uh, all right so this was a lot of fun. We are a little over an hour now mm -hmm. on this one. Have we uh, have we beat this one down pretty good? Because this I, was a lot of fun. I, I, I learned a lot in this. I, I've gone through everything that I had. Um, I don't have any round robin questions for the end. Uh, I, I'm, I am curious mm -hmm. as to whether or not, after hearing all this, does anybody here consider themselves a stoic? No. Nope. I, I, mean, I threw my phone yesterday. Yeah. I... Uh... Uh, I mean, I guess, you know, going back to that situational stoicism, I, I definitely try and practice it in situations. Does that make me a stoic? I, I don't know. I, I'm in that place where I want to be a stoic, but I know I don't have the emotional ability to be. Yeah. Well, and I'll, I'll say this. Uh, and in fact, we kind of touched on this earlier, and I promised that we would discuss it. Um, the idea of of practicing some tenets of, so of stoicism, wanting to be a stoic, um, you know, one of the, the primary goals of stoicism is, is constant self-improvement. And I do think that, um, I, I think that I am striving for self-improvement all the time. Um, see, and, and, and that's, that's my issue with it is because it seems to be kind of a, uh, uh, degree of opposites there because one of their tenets is you must always improve and the other tenet is you must be uh be, be satisfied with what you have yeah. and i don't know how those two work together well i i think you can be satisfied with what you have um but seek to gain better control over yeah. you. I, think I don't think I'll ever be satisfied. The satisfaction with what you have is more speaking of physical items um and recognizing that you don't need many of the things that you have to continue to survive. Um, whereas yeah. continual self-improvement is more about your mental and emotional state. Yeah, I, I, maybe, maybe. Uh, I, my, my thing is intellectually, I, I, I see this and I go, it would be so nice to be that person that looks around at what I have and says, it's all I need. I don't need anything else. And I know I'll never be that person. I'll always be the person that goes, I just need one more thing. I don't need a lot. I need one more thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I think that part of being a Stoic or attempting to be a Stoic is when you have that urge to say, I just need that one more thing. I need to get that one more thing going. You know what? I don't need that one more thing. I, just really I want it. it. Um, I'm, and maybe going without it for a period of time. And I think that's a way that you could practice stoicism in your life. You Say, just, I really need that thing. I don't need that thing. I want it. You have just given me the greatest idea because I'm teaching up. I just started another sem new semester of economics and we are discussing needs and wants. And it's really hard to teach this. Believe it or not, it's hard to teach needs and wants mm -hmm. to, 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 to 17 year olds. Uh, and I could attack it from a stoic side. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting way. Thank you. But, you know, just say, they may hate you now. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine, guys. Um, but, you know, maybe when you you feel that urge, say, you know what? I'm going to go a period of time without it. I'm going to prove to myself that I don't need it. Cool. And, and then if I still want it, I'll get it. Yeah. If, I, if you can. I heard a piece of financial advice, and I think it was a bit dated, that whenever you buy something new, you know, that's not, you know, the, the pipes to repair your water leak, you know. Uh, to take the receipt to the box and stick it in the corner for a week. And if you can go that week without it, take it back. You don't need it. Uh, Good advice, though. The, the modern equivalent that I try and practice with that kind of stuff is I put it in my shopping cart for a week. And if I... Because we buy everything online. Yeah, I do, too. I do, yeah. too. And I do that all the yeah. time. I'll put it there, and I'll come back a few days later and go, do I still want this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. In fact, we do that with our, with our business decisions sometimes on the show. We... Let's put it here and let's talk about it again yeah, in a week or exactly. so. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Interesting. Uh, so. We are, are we finished with this this discussion? Because I, I have another so. podcast have I want to talk about. Yeah. Okay. So 
recommendation. Yeah, uh, there, there's a brand new podcast. I've, I've just only heard one episode. It's only one episode out. It's called Disgraceland. Mm. And Disgraceland, it's a, a it's a musician that does it, and he talks about the uh, the morality errors that a lot of our popular, particularly musicians, have made. The first episode is out right now. It's about Sam Cooke and the rape allegations and and, and his and his very mysterious murder. Uh, what I like about it is it deals with morality questions and it tells a great story. I think mm -hmm. you'll like it. It doesn't really relate to six pack philosophy, but I think if you're somebody that likes a good story, uh, I, I loved it. I, yeah. I fell in love with it. I, I disagree. I think I, I think a big piece of six pack philosophy is continual improvement and learning. Not necessarily maybe from the Stoics perspective, but constantly taking in new information and seeing how that fits in your life. And so. Uh, I I think it does fit. Yeah, Disgraceland. You can find it on any of, any of your podcasts out there. So, uh, hey, John, I, I know we we have a script here and we kind of move on here, but I want to I want to give us a chance here to talk about something that happened here recently uh, mm. with a podcast uh, uh, carrier that we have there. Um, oh yes, I was going to do, do that last week. Yeah, yeah. Do, do we want to talk about Stitcher a little bit? Yeah, so we are contractually obligated uh, to periodically give a plug to Stitcher. Yeah, so this is our plug. Yeah, for Stitcher. so here's our plug for Stitcher. Uh, so, Stitcher. if uh, a couple weeks ago, what episode was that? That was our truth, truth, truth. or was it honesty? Hon honesty. It was honesty. honesty. Was it? Our, yeah, our honesty, honesty yeah, show. Yeah, it was honesty. If uh, if you were on Stitcher and our honesty show didn't come out till like the end of the week. Um, that was all Stitcher. Uh, every other podcast catcher we had uh, picked it up on time. And this is they, not a new occurrence with Stitcher. No. It happens all the time. And they couldn't seem to manage it. And for some reason, it wasn't like they updated every day and they went back and picked it up. We had to like manually email them, wait for them to get back. And, and that's why it was so late. So our plug to Stitcher. If you like hearing our episodes later in the week, you maybe don't want to get it when everyone else gets it. You would, you would yeah. like that delay. Then I would recommend downloading the Stitcher app and listening to our podcast there. However, Stitcher, fix your shit. If yeah. you would like it on Mondays when it comes out for everyone else, you can check out Google Play <laughs> or the iTunes Store I've got or to tell tune you, in. And it, it, it breaks my heart to say this because I use Stitcher as an app yeah. because I, I love the way they give me my, my, my suggestions. I like all of that about it, but they're just not reliable when it comes to getting stuff on time. So uh, I used to really like them for the news. Yeah. But yeah. then they started like, I can't. Just set it on autoplay, and I can't tell it that I don't want to listen to sports. Yeah, I don't fucking want to listen to sports. I used to be able to thumbs down them, but now I can't even do that. So you hear that? If you like random unwanted sports, if you like late episodes, or unwanted if, parts of news, like unwanted news, you don't that, want to hear about fucking recipes. Fuck you on Stitcher. If that is your thing, Stitcher, that is the app for you. There's our plug. Yeah, and hey, if we lose you. Screw it. Yeah, I, I'm really not going to be upset that we have to. We don't have to send that email anymore. Yeah. And honestly, if you look at our listener numbers, Stitcher's not just a huge part of it. Yeah. So yeah. whatever, I don't care. If you listen on Stitcher, please listen somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, go listen somewhere you, else. They you don't might, deserve your support. You yeah. might switch because there's a possibility after this particular rant, we're not going to be on there yeah. anymore. They don't, they don't care. They don't listen. <laughs> they don't fucking care. What's the, what, what's, what, what's the term? Oh. I think it says, uh, bye, Felicia. I yeah. think that's how it goes. Bye, Felicia. Is, is that yeah. it? Yeah. All yeah. right. Hey, that was fun. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've enjoyed it, and we hope you have too. We'll see you next week. Cheers. 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 Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.